Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's school lab instruments from, I think this is a German brand, the Neva brand. At least everything here is written in German. And um, I think these two units, they come from the same measurement experiment setup. So the first one here is a unit for a Frank Hertz experiment. So the Frank Hertz experiment is something to do with a vacuum tube where you have um, mercury gas inside a, uh, just like a triode uh, kind of a tube. And then by exciting the anode voltage in 4.9 volts steps, you can prove that the interference of your um, electron speeds creates um, peaks that goes again and again and again. And this reveals all sorts of um, science things that is really interesting uh, if you are into atoms and uh, electrons and funky stuff like that. Unfortunately, I don't have this tube, so I'm not able to recreate the experiment, but I will put a link in the description to someone who explain about the Frank Hurt experiments, and then you can uh, dig in a more deep uh, to all that. That also means I cannot um, experiment with, uh, with these uh, units anyway, because they can't really be used for anything. I just wanted to open them and show you the internal parts of these uh, school uh, lab um, equipments, because uh, I've already posted a lot of uh, Danish school e equipment uh, from a Danish manufacturer called Impo, and it could be cool to um, kind of compare the build quality and the internal parts with a German company called Neva. So that was actually uh, yeah my whole point of making this uh, video. So let's uh, dig into it and uh, open the units. So now we are inside the tube control part. And uh, it is not far from what I expected. The transformer is, of course, very, very small because this is very, very low power. We got a two um, voltage supplies. That's power supplies, DC voltage like that and then we got a little amplifier so this one will uh, pre-amplify the current in the control grid of the tube and then uh, this output is fed to this uh, pl connector so that will be a quite simple Amplifier circuit. I don't understand why they have these uh, heat sinks on there. So they're probably running high DC uh, bias and none of this uh, runs really really fast or anything the current that you pick up is in um, It's like really really small of course, so you need quite a lot of gain. So here's the pre amplifier for that current and uh, As you can also see the potentiometer is probably full of tin whiskers See if I touch these, say, Ugh, nasty, huh? And um, the heating, as you can hear here. So this is a power wire wound potentiometer that just goes uh, directly from the transformer to the heater uh, plug. So the, there isn't really any high voltage or anything like that. Here is the, um, the anode voltage goes from zero to 70 volts and you can select a DC or a ramp for that voltage. And this is not a ramp, actually. This is just mains sine wave. So it sweeps in a sine wave backwards and forward. And then you can, on your scope, select how much deflection you want here. And uh, then you have, of course, the variable heater to get what you want. And then the amplifier got two different uh, settings, amplification and then the zero point so this way, the, the part of the curve that is interesting is what you can amplify. 
So that is a really uh, good way to do it. And then uh, you can set up, uh, up a voltmeter here, so you can verify your voltage. All that is uh, pretty fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit funny to see this uh, design, to be honest. Um, there are a few things that I find a little bit weird. I mean, the transformer is lifted on plastic. Look at that. And then there's a screw connecting to the chassis of the transformer. And this wire goes to that common point with three screw-on terminals to that same screw. So that means if this screw is loose, all three points is more or less not connected. So that is, uh, I think, not the way it is done today uh, due to regulations. So, yeah, that is a, a little bit funny how that is um, done. It's not ugly or anything like that. It's just a little bit untraditional with that fuse mounted like that. When you unscrew this, you're probably going to have a hard time getting it out due to this part of the metal, as you can see here, is blocking that way. So why is that fuse mounted right there is a mystery. It's probably because they figured out, oops, we forgot the fuse. And then it goes like that. So yeah, it's all right. It, this reminds me a lot about, you know, the Danish Impo manufacturer, to be honest. I think, to be fair, this one looks a little bit better, actually. <laughs> Many of the Inpo products I've been in, so it looks a little bit uh, like a prototype uh, kind of style. And this is also a very neat way to hold a wire, right? But you can definitely cut your fingers here. This is razor sharp, that point. But it sort of works. Let's look a little bit inside the measurement amplifier. This one is a Neva Type 7212. And uh, it is a little bit similar. They still use a tiny, tiny little transformer here at the back. And again, this three on, on one screw kind of ground connection. And all that and again this funny funny screw um, with a fuse you just cannot access um that is a big mystery look at that how are you gonna get this out really really funny and then of course we got two little power supplies here positive and negative 15 volts for the system individual rectifier bridges capacitors and everything here is a nicely uh, done with a little transistor and some signal diodes. So yeah, that's definitely the nice little power supply. And we can see here at the front, we got plus minus uh, 15 volts. So you can monitor that is uh, correct. So let's look a little bit at the settings at the beginning. So we got, um, that will be DC mode, you see? Uh, um, this is of course the uh, amplification and all that kind of stuff, but here, it says amps per second, so that will be a an AC mode. So it's a little bit weird, uh, but if you think about it, this makes a little bit sense because they wanted to amplify, of course, the AC portion of the signal to make a nice curve. And um, here is some really funny things that I found. So the input, we've got two different inputs here. One is... Uh, going through a 10 mega ohm resistor and the other one goes into a little amplifier module the signal also goes oh look at that in teflon and little connectors like that so they know of course we are talking about really really high impedance low signals uh, fancy smancy things right and then the signal goes up to the attenuator or range selector and of course we got all the DC modes uses resistors and the AC modes uses capacitors so that is not a big uh, surprise for that 
got a little extra transistor amplifier and stuff like that and they try to minimize probably some leakage or something like that with silicon uh, glue here on the back it looks like this transistor oh this is a dual on up amp or something like that right hmm a little bit interesting to see what that is and here is something i was yelling and screaming about when i saw this you're gonna love it look at that one right there see when i turn this knob What is going on here? So there's a switch that somehow connects to the input. Isn't that, I think it's, yeah, this is connected to ground or something like that over there. So you can disconnect the input. What a funny switch. Definitely a zero capacitance switch <laughs> look at the distance this handling or i don't know 100,000 volts and zero picofarad when it's disconnected i have never seen anything this crazy in a long long time i totally love it <laughs> they had a problem and they definitely found a solution for that and again look at that the transformer is on isolated plastic and then Chassis is screwed to chassis here. I mean, what is going on? I think it's because leakage current to the to the transformer. They don't want this to travel in the chassis. So if you have everything connected to a one single point, then there is, per definition, no AC currents going in your chassis. So that's a little bit interesting. Why? I cannot come up with any other idea why you wanted to do that. You could, of course, just put this transformer down to chassis and then use this point as your uh, star zero reference point and then avoid this funky looking um, isolation. So, yeah, definitely um, that is all I wanted to show you uh, on these two uh, units uh, since I cannot really power them up i don't have the tube they don't do anything i find uh, of any kind of use but i just wanted to show you the build quality and uh yeah how they are designed i think yeah it's not that bad after all so thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe and tell your friends and all that you know you know the thing Bye-bye.